It's all about basics, basics, basics. So if we can get these basics down today, I can assure you beekeeping will be a very fun hobby for you. If you don't have the basics, you're gonna come back and see me year after year and say, Ray, I need to have some more bees ordered because you're gonna lose your bees. So that's why we put this boot camp on, is to help you save the bees year after year after year. And your bees will thrive through each year too. The colony is headed up by the queen. The queen does a lot of different things within the, within the hive. When she comes out of, of her cell, she's going to make three mating flights. And those mating flights are very, very critical for her history going forward. Will she be able to develop the brood production that she needs to keep the colony thriving year after year after year? So during these mating flights, she is going to mate with up to 15 drones. Now I'm gonna use some terms at the beginning here, but we'll dive in deeper, like what is a drone? What is a colony? Okay, the drones are male bees. If she is poorly mated, and this can happen in a lot of different ways, let's just say it's raining out when she's supposed to be doing one of those mating flights. That will cut back on her mating with drones. Or if there's a whole week of rain or overcast or cold weather, then she might not be mated properly. If that happens, she might only last maybe a year, maybe two years. But on average, a queen should have a progressive three year of good cell production for her brood. It's all about brood when it comes to a queen. If she is laying well, then the hive will be very, very productive. She also dictates the temperament of the hive. How many beekeepers do we have here that said, boy, that hive was mean today? All right, there can be some different reasons for that. But you go back the next day and they're all mild and happy to see you. A queen can also be mated with another drone that might bring in that temperament uh, into the brood. So with that said, if a queen has a mean temperament to them, which means every time you get in the hive, the bees just come flying up in your face, that's a good indication that one, your queen might be needing to be replaced. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, number two, it could be that you were getting into the hive at the wrong time of the day. Let's just say a cold front is coming through or lightning or thunder is in the distance and you wanna get into your hive. All those bees are gonna be upset. They're gonna say, hey, close, close the hive up. A storm is coming. So you can't always judge that one experience on a bad queen. This would have to be time and time again when you get into the hive. On average, a queen is good for about three years. We have seen some queens that are good in their production for up to five years. So it's really dependent on those mating flights that we just mentioned a moment ago. Okay, brood pattern. We're gonna show you a lot of slides on brood pattern here later this morning and this will allow you to see what is the standard that you should be looking for. And that is looking like a bullseye on a target, um, out in the target range. Last but not least, she cannot feed herself. She has to have the other bees within the colony feed her. So when you get a queen and it's in the queen box, there will be attendant bees. And those attendant bees are meant to eat through the sugar and feed it to the queen. She cannot eat that on her own. So if your hive is not doing well, your problem is probably the queen. Either she's not laying properly or she has a temperament that's not good. So those are the two things that I would highly recommend to look at. On average, during the spring and summer months, she can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day. Now that gets pulled way back this time of the year, it might only be 300 eggs per day. 
Because the colony creates warmth, like a basketball within the hive, and it goes through each of the different frames that are there. Now, if those bees are not covering that brood that's in the cells, they're gonna get cold and you'll lose those bees the next morning. The, the worker bees will start pulling those out and putting them outside of the hive. That's called chilled brood. So during the winter months, depending if you live in Michigan or down to Florida, the, the winter months are gonna be different for each of you as beekeepers. In Michigan, that queen is not going to lay an egg during the day. And it might be several weeks or months before she starts producing eggs again if you're in Michigan. But if you're in Florida, you're gonna find that she's laying 100 to 200 in the off season. And the off season is fall and winter and early spring. But like right here in Georgia, the end of February, we start seeing that egg production begin and kick in really, really fast. So it's important as beekeepers to stay in front of that, know what, what's happening with your bees. After mating, the queen never leaves the hive, except when your hive swarms or the old queen leaves and the new queen stays during the swarming part of that. Okay. Now let's talk about the worker bees. 